Everybody has some kind of Jones here in New York City. Everybody has something that they need to do in order to get through the day. <laughs> and if you're like me, you don't want to really hurt anybody. But I'm sure we'd like somebody to come by who could hustle out of a few bucks. Then you're sitting here, you're sick, you don't know where the fuck to get some bread. It's like a chill you can't shave. Like an ache, you don't know where it comes from. It's like a good love affair. It's nice when it starts. Then it becomes fucked. It's like everything else.
I tell you, Simon, syringes you gave Jesus, gave him hepatitis. That's why he was yellow and he couldn't stay in the ground. He rose three times, went to heaven, and now no one knows if he is alive, dead, or just not around. You know, you could stop. I don't know. It's just the best part. I mean, it's right. It only lasts another minute. Okay. Yeah, I went to the battery. Yeah. 
Because four of them were jumping on me. If I'm right there and I'm fighting, I don't mind fighting. But going back for fucking yeah, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, you know. Right? Well, you know, you say you and well, they, like, <laughs> you guys and you whiteies never fight back. Shit. I mean, you know, you gotta show your man's playing with your man. If you take your shit away, you're gonna just stay there and go, and you're not coming back. He sees you the next day, he's gonna Ooh, do it again. What are you guys, fucking dear Abby or something? Oh, come on. Dear Chico, huh, what should I do? No, he's giving you a vibe, man. What? What? All right, all right, all right. I know that. I usually do. You know that, Jimbo. What am I gonna do? Fight back. Right. You usually do, but today you do. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He's a fucking guy, man. Yeah, he's he's not not if he wouldn't be getting high, none of this shit would be happening. It's stupid, right. man. I don't understand. These people are dumb, man. And wow. for people, he thought I meant just white people. And I don't mean yeah, just white people. I'm talking about people them. that get high and that yeah. shit. It's no fucking good, man. Look at them. Let me ask you kids something. 
The black guy was walking down your street, right? A whole bunch of white guys jumped on him and punched him in the face. Would you help him? You got a cigarette you can spare? Could you spare a cigarette? Thanks. Ah. Ah, you know, it's, I can always get $10 together. Pay and handle a few bucks, hit up a friend, collect on a debt. Loose you know, there's always some way of getting ten bucks together. We got the punk rock special joints here. I was a lonely soul. I had nobody till I met you. But you keep me. Maybe sometimes you sell your clothes out on the street or everything, you know, anything you can get your hands on, you sell it. Or you help a friend sell something he's got and he gives you some of the money from it. But I mean, you know, you don't have to hurt nobody to keep a drug habit in this city. Yeah, this is Chelsea. Yeah, right here. What do you want? I got nickels. Uh, I mean, shit, we all, we all do something we wouldn't do to keep our habit together. Hey, man, don't kill my business. Come here, I got oh, joints. Joint? Yeah, I got oh, joints. I Come here. I got joints. Come yeah. here. Give me a paper, Jose. I thought you were going to smoke. Yeah, but can I have a paper for this guy? Come on. Jose, come on. Jose, give me two papers. One for you and me. Hey. <laughs> Assholes. You know, what they'll do is they'll find somebody that's clean. You know, they ain't got high yet that day. And they'll have them test the dope. Mm, sometimes that's real nice. You know, because they don't know it's really strong. And you get real fucked up. So how you been? I've been doing all that, right, man, you know, can't complain, really. Start complaining, nobody don't want to hear about it. I ain't seen it in a while, you still living down there? I'm sure more than one dope tester has wound up on a rooftop with the rats eating at his bones because uh, so-and-so didn't cut it right. Yeah, right. They don't like it. <laughs> How's it going? It's hard as hell, though. It don't look like it's coming too fast, though. No, not really, because uh, it's getting cold now, you know. Summertime is all right. You know, and now it's getting kind of cold. It's going to be kind of hard. drugs going down and they got these chicks bagging up dope and running it up to the corners there's really like 
a, a, you know, a quality control. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. I got a nice So far, so good, man. Still tastes pretty nice. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, nice pepper hit too, man. Yeah. You said it's all right. Enjoy. Okay, I appreciate that. Right, we're going to be fantastic. Just to yeah, tell you, okay, man, take a couple that. of lines, man. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is good stuff, so it can hold, you know, like a decent cut. If we can make a thick rock. Put a one, two on it. Oh, no, you can put more oh, than that on the Cyranian. No, no, on the Cyranian, you can put more. Three or four. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Police collared almost 100 suspects, convicted pushers of drugs from cocaine to heroin, face up to life sentences. And the city says it will keep fighting till the salesmen are off the streets. Rats, that's what they are, vermin rats uh, who are taking advantage of uh, these uh, poor uh, people who are now addicted. Uh, and uh, they are uh, not uh, simply to be pitied, they also have to be punished. The cops say the maze of abandoned hey. buildings has swallowed hey, up the hey, evidence. So it. We don't catch them, we apprehend them with the drugs on them. Uh, we don't have the criminal possession of a control substance. Even with felony charges, an overloaded prosecutor's office and criminal justice system spew most back on the street. Now a new approach. Level many of these buildings and renovate others. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what you call them, Second Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they might go someplace else, but if we don't stop trying, it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to be chaos. The cops feel getting more people behind bars is as much a part of the battle as tearing down the building. It's only a drop in the bucket, but the city is going to be hiring nine new assistant narcotics prosecutors. <laughs> Truman, 
That's how I started taking drugs. I started taking aspirins and Coca-Cola. And then I got to whatever. It's called in cold blood. And all of a sudden, the Hondo, red light, you know? So they make us they make us sit there, you know? They say, cr everybody crouch down, don't say a word. So we're sitting there. That's why I didn't go. Well, I know. That's why I never want you to go, baby. You know that. You know, I always go cop for you. But anyway, so, um, so then, so we're all crouched down waiting. And it's about, we're on in seriously, like at least 15 minutes waiting while they said the police are right out front. Don't nobody move. And, um... So we're sitting there, and then I said, finally, fuck it, you know, I'm going to try to get out of here, because, like, I already had a dope on me stashed in my pants. So, um, uh, so then there's this guy up on the second floor, and, like, there's no steps going up. So, like, he had to pull me up, you know, and, like, there was, like, a hole going down to the basement, all these broken glass and tin cans and rats. Oh. Right, so he's pulling me up. I'm scared of heights, you know, anyway. So, like, he pulls me up. I run through the run through the building, go out a window, have to hop over an air shaft, right through another abandoned building, down a fire escape, over three fucking barbed wire fences, and on the third fence, these dogs were chasing me and biting at my legs, man. I fucking hop over, right, go around through, come out the other end, like. I mean, totally fucking destroyed my body, you know, like all banged and scratched up. I come out. And the police are gone. The police are gone, and people are going back in the place again. Already? Right. Two seconds? Right, <laughs> right. In, in like two minutes. That's like figures, if I had waited figures. two more minutes, I wouldn't have had to go through yeah. all this fucking bullshit. <laughs> Granny was, see through blue. Granny was, was. See through. See through. Come on. Let me get. Let me get. Let me get. You want to call the three person? No, 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 no. Let me get. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Nero. Where's, where's, honey, where's? Excuse me. You can't hang out here. I'm waiting for somebody. I'm sorry, babe. You gotta hang out across the street somewhere. I'm sorry. Across the street. Yeah, I'm standing here. I'm sorry, you know, we're conducting business here. You got to hang out down here. Your business is inside, and I'm waiting for my man to come out. Excuse me? Go ahead. Get my hang out of your bag. Go ahead. It wasn't all that hot.
Money straight out if you want a cop. CND. Token dope. Okay. Go ahead. Come on, you gotta move faster. Yeah. Yo, 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 move the lineup, move the lineup. Yeah. I think I have to have shots ready when I see you. Three more? Sometimes I think, like, what would it be like if we didn't have dope? This next one's written up by uh, number three junkie of New York, Waldo. One, two, three! <laughs> such and such a label. You know, he buys it at the same place as the other guys, and they all may go to the same factory and say, put my stamp on this and put a one and a half step on it. Now that means that for like every gram of heroin, there's a gram and a half cut. And that's how you get the different grade of dope on the street. And then all of a sudden, boom, they'll say, put a three on it, and then they'll put it out on the street. It sucks, it ain't beef, but it takes you three bags to get straight instead of, you know, one and a half or two. Oh, boy, you're the one who stuck off the first national bank, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
What's up, man? What's happening, bro? CND, CND. CND, CND. What's up, cool? Yeah, why not, man? CND. They good, right? They can't. What's happening, man? What's happening? Works, works, works. What's up, Jesus Christ? Yellow team, yellow team. Thank you, Dora, man. Dora, man. What's up? What's Listen, man, um, you been hearing some shit about you selling some dummies out here. Yo, man, yo. Beating customers. I don't play that shit, man. I don't play that. Yo, come on. What about, do yo, yo, that, what about, um, putting your shit on the street instead of ours? Man, you're talking out of your fucking face, man. I don't fuck with nobody's product, man. Fuck you, Fetty. Hey, you fuck know? you too, man. Yo, what the fuck does he got to do with us, man? man? Listen, man. man he's, he's getting what, greedy is no what it is, man. You're the one who's getting greedy. I ain't getting greedy, man. He don't got nothing to do with us, man. He's just coming out of his face. We don't want you here. We don't want you in the spot. We don't want you at all.
If it didn't bother the judge, we would find out about it. But we were like, you know, who the fuck did it? Don't excuse my language in that, man, but like, that's the way it is, you know? When you live in Lower East Side, man, that's the way it is. But eventually, you'll find out. Hey, everybody out here fucks up with everything. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing you do is, you know, you gotta be cool. But when it comes to brothers, man, you know, and they know that, that these guys are my brother in law, they know, you know, who we are. You know, we don't fuck with nobody that shouldn't be messing with us. Now, whatever he did, it, you know, between him, we would like to find out who did it. And if it's for drugs, then we would like to know. You know? Now, the best thing I did was get in touch with the family. You know? And once the family said, yo, we gotta do this, we gotta do it. You know? I wish I knew who did it, but. But like they say, drugs lead you to your death. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got it, sometimes you don't. You don't have it, you find a way to get it. Heroin is a cruel mistress, a brutal overseer, man. <laughs> it wakes you up early in the morning, takes you out, makes you do things you would never do. And, uh, well, you just don't have time to worry about other things, things that maybe you should be worrying about. Facing reality sometimes uh, it's a hard thing to do. What's really sad is, like, a lot of the kids that come down to the cop, they don't, you know, they got nothing shaking their lives up, you know. I ain't the cops. You know, you know that now, but the cops... But it's amazing, you know, these young white chicks, you know, they go into this building with a hundred bucks and they're straight, you know. <laughs> they don't want to go out on the street and cop. You know, you can get your throat slit out there. They'll come down, buy the guys some dope for themselves and some dope for them and send them out and then they'll sit there and they'll get high and, you know, the guys will have the works and everything. Oh, yeah. Up it, pop it. Déjame, déjame, no toque. This one I've been on your string. So the kids wind up using these shitty works, you know, that who who knows has used these things, man. That's how these diseases get transmitted, you know. You know, this is really... You can smoke a marble, right? Yeah. Oh, man, what am I doing? I got oh, baby. Right I'm, I'm having a hard time hitting myself, baby. Do you get me off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, I'm think not. You my veins my veins are. Huh? I have shallow yeah. veins. All right, just tie it, y'all. I used to. I used to get off an awful lot. I'm so for a couple of years. Man, this is really. Susan, you got to add something? No, I just get yeah, out like once or twice work. a week. Can't get out. And I'm having a lot of hard times. You can see I've been making a lot of We might have to take a ride down because his boss doesn't usually put phone calls for I was just had a, I seen, you know, like one day a girlfriend and this, a girlfriend of mine and her old man, they were <clears throat> arguing over drugs. It's but crazy. It's stupid. Uh, yeah, it's who's working, doing more? You know? and, or, and, right, and who's holding this and who's holding that? You know what I mean? Sweat them. It's another way to let go. You know, I love it. And I, you know, really getting sick of it, you know. It's, you can't fool it. Even when my old man it. tells me, you know, he gets, you know, he hates, you know. You know, sometimes you'd be arguing over the stupid uh, shit, you know. You know, really, like, it's really shitty, man. I know, it's a good No drag. good, man. Just want to just clean up hey. the shit. Stop uh, working. Like I said, I used to do the same it, thing. It's like, you know, we used to fight over who's yeah, gonna get off yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're always saying, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, and you're gonna stop, and you're gonna stop. That's good. Right, That's and first thing you think of when you get up in the morning is where you're gonna get your first shot. No, yeah. not really, Excuse but me. I feel this way if I had my music every morning. Well, that's true. You get through about 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, and then you have my You gotta cut that shit out. You get jobs, you know? Hey, hey, it's been doing what you do. I start. You know, gun in my hand so start. No, no. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Go back in That's my hand bullshit. and say, 
Now the first, the first step, man, if you're on her journey, Every day you get up, you got to say, where am I going to eat today, right? Where yeah. am I going to get the money to you know, eat? Like, you know how many days we've gone hungry, right? Yeah. All we've worried about is getting off, getting our fix, yeah. right? Because we were yeah. sick. How many times do cigarettes. I say to her, fuck the dough, buy a pack of cigarettes? Miss you know? Miss Perfect. Oh, far from it. Oh, Miss Perfect. Far from it, that's okay. for sure. Yeah, another one. But at least mm -hmm. I'll buy cigarettes and shit. Okay, yeah. at least I buy cigarettes food. too, and I'll eat too. Yeah, everybody, okay. everybody, everybody when I have you at the point that when she's I have at, right? You, you know, might don't be here. How much money you have on you now? You understand how much Why money I got on me? Were hey. you ever at the point she's at now? He has money. If both he has, I got me, honey. No. No? no. Never in your life? very important to you. No. If you never got to the point where no. you would, you'd leave yourself short no. cigarettes to go yeah. get this no. dough? Yes. Well, I, I'm uh, happy for you. No. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Just my mother and my sister. And you know, I had a fight for every every inch that you uh, every notch you got on your gun, I guess I could say. I was gonna become a, a baseball player, but um I made the varsity baseball team when I was a freshman in high school. And they told me, either cut your hair or you can't be on the, the baseball team. So I left school, quit school, and started uh, my own business, making money, and started playing guitar. Rico. Yo. Yo, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Alarico, yo! I know I look like Joe Perry, but play with me anyway. Come on, man. Hey, Steven, you still here? Yo! He's probably in the bathroom snorting or something. Don't anybody want to Hey, Steven, you here? Yo! Give me a break. Look at him. Somebody play with him. Anybody know what that bastard is? Is he standing next to anybody? Where is it? Where is it? Yo, Tyler Rico. Yo. When I say I'm in love, you... 
I swear to God. That's twice. I mean, I play music, that's what I do. You know, I'm not a professional drug taker. I don't think. No, that's something. Which one? Which one? Which one? Some of both. Some of both? And we got D. Only got some D left. Let me got see D? some tracks. You got some tracks, man? I'm tracks all over the fucking place. What the fuck is this? Yeah. You see me around. I'm with you. Huh? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've seen you around. Mm. Mm, how many you want to get? Give me two D. Two Ds. You got 
Okey dokey. Alright. Mm, don't know D now. Alright. Yeah, I couldn't hold on this cheap fucking dope you got for all the fucking rights and time. <laughs> Watch that guy, Eddie. You don't look right. Mm -hmm. Heroin is like, uh, well, first of all, it's a treasure hunt. You know, you got to find the money. <laughs> You know, and then it's the adventure, going through the jungle or the war zone. And, you know, then it's finding the drugs and finding good drugs. You know, it's dodging the cops and uh, the thrill of the chase, and the thrill of the hunt for the dope. <laughs> it's the satisfaction and relief once you get something good, you know. That's always the end result match. Then it's the satisfaction and the relief of getting high. Everybody need drugs. Everybody live on drugs. Main, main, main basically thing. Everybody, everybody can't stop messing with drugs. I like drugs. I like to deal with drugs. I saw works to get my drugs. And mainly I love, I love drugs. Mainly cocaine. Cocaine is a beautiful thing when you're getting high off it. And mainly when you're getting high off it, and it's beautiful. I love it, and I like it, and I will never stop using it. It's always beautiful to deal with, to deal with drugs. Cocaine is my main hobby. I would, ne I would never deal with nothing else but cocaine. And believe me, it's beautiful. I can never stop using it, and I will always keep using it, as long as I can. It's like a lovely, beautiful thing to me. I'm not sorry that I've started messing with drugs and I would always, I would always will mess with drugs as long as I like to. Very much so. Cocaine is a beautiful drug. I like it and I love it. And I would always stick by it. And I would always deal with it. Mainly, I, I have so worked for, for so many periods of months to get my drugs. It built my habit up and my needs. My need for that, for that bag of coke that everybody loves and likes. Mainly, I love it. I can never stop using it. I, I would always use it. I would always need it. You know, for most of the people down here, it's a pretty shitty place. You know, they're living on Fruit Loops and pizza. When you're high and dope, it's like, I don't know, I guess, well, I hope someday I get out of this fucking hell hole. I'll tell you, you know, I never thought about death so much. But it's really become a part of my life. And it, nothing matters. The only thing that matters is feeling good. <laughs> the only time I feel good is when I'm really stoned. And most of the time, these motherfuckers won't let you feel good. They'll just give you enough to get you straight. You get beat. It's just part of the game, you know? You gotta take it with a grain of salt. Fuck, if I got enough for it, every time I got beat, I'd be dead a long time ago. You know? Maybe someday I'll get off this merry-go-round and I'll find something else to do. Just 
to have a good time. I mean, there was no, uh, nothing to escape from or nothing like that. There was no, uh, problems like a lot of kids start because they, uh, you know, they're bored and lonely and, you know, it makes them feel like they're, they're alive, I guess. Just did it for having fun. I think it was, uh, had a lot, has a lot to do with the way uh, people look at me and think of me. But, uh, I mean, I would never, first of all, uh, turn anyone on to drugs. I think it's, you know, it's a hard thing to handle, you know? And um, once you get into it, it's really rough to get out of. <laughs> can't preach to anyone because I'm not one to speak. You know, I've, I've always told everyone that started started doing it, you know, they don't know what they're in for, you know. It's not, you know, an easy life. My mind, yeah. I don't think it's done anything to my mind or my music. Because, you know, I've played rock and roll before I started taking drugs and play rock and roll now. Would you I say? I would have been better, but I would have been a successful, you know, successful a long time ago. Uh, successful in what terms? Having a lot of money. But that's not why you play. No. But still, you. You I mean, it helps. Yeah. But you wanted to s get out of the drugs. I think I've never wanted really to stop. What's going to happen to you? I don't know what's going to happen to you. Well, but I don't take drugs. So, you get hit by a car when you cross the street. I mean, you know, if something's going to happen to you, it's going to happen. You know, that's... The way life goes, you know, you can't predict the future. So you don't have uh, a will to get rid of the drugs for yourself? I don't find them as a major problem for me. Hi, Diana. Yeah, Spitz. Listen, I want to stop by for a minute, okay? Thanks, I'll be right by. There's a couple of more there. Ow. These guys. Anyway, this chick at the pit, she's a weird number. She's got, uh, she's got this necklace around her neck with, uh, it's like a heart with a skull on it, and inside yeah. it is cyanide. That's weird. My guy. Yeah, right. I was I was reading up on these tarantulas, yeah. and they got eight eyes. And if they lose legs, they can regenerate them. You know, they shed their skins every year. They just come right out of it, and they look leave skins that are exactly like the tarantulas. You like wake up in the morning, and the next thing you know, it looks like you got two of them in there. <laughs> you know, the mice are really aware of what you're doing for him with the translation. Because the fuckers are really boring. They have no, like, emotions or response. They don't, like, you know, it's, you know, they don't even know that you're feeding them. They have no idea what's going on at all. Yeah, the best thing about having the spiders is that you feed them crickets, and, like, for a couple of days, you get to listen to the crickets uh, you sound like you're in the country. It's like the only really good thing. <laughs> but... Come here. You know what you are? Come on, don't go in there. All right, do go in there. Come out this way. This little mouse thinks he's a rat still. I have got to get some new works. Yeah. This seems like a nail. Yeah, well. Typical. Yeah, I've been feeding the 
the rats like beans and peas and stuff. And the mice, they really like them, you know. You don't have to just buy this food if you give them like um, dried vegetables, you know. They eat that just as much. It's pretty interesting. Wow, good stuff. Rat yeah, pellets. They'll still be here when we're all gone. No, rats don't live long. Yeah, but uh, like during the Cuban crisis, when I was 10 years old, I had all these nightmares of atomic war. Sure, and those were the days of hide under your desk, you know, like that's going to do some good, you know, when they drop an atomic bomb. And there's nothing that's really stimulating the kids today except for the fear of, you know, um, out and out war. Oh, rats. Uh, See, these guys are much more intelligent. Much they know what's on. happening. Come on, rats all. See, this one's all fat, see? One skinny one and one fat one. Yeah, it's like I cute. went to um, to the nuclear demonstration on June 12th, and there was all kinds of people there, and there were even punks, you know? And it's, like, really good to see that the young people that are interested will occasionally come out and do actions, you know, because... Sure. Seems to be an incredible waste of time, you know, that like, you know, guys go around with shirts that say New York rules and DC rules and LA rules, you know, but where it's at is that no one rules. Right. You know, people are conditioned to look for the differences, you know, in between people and not to realize that they should be like working together. Well, the only thing that's going to wake them up is if the youth of America is threatened. And if they're threatened like the youth was threatened during the Vietnam War, then there will be, you know, an overall consciousness again. If you go to school and you realize that you're going to come out and you're going to make $3 an hour and it's not going to pay you rent and it's not going to buy you food, you know, that's a distinct threat on your consciousness. The poor kids go in the service. It's not contained to poor blacks anymore. It's, you know, it's all the poor people. They go into the service just like in an underdeveloped country. It's not that many kids going into the army, you There's know. plenty of them. Poor kids are all going into the army. It's the best thing they could do. It gives them, it gives them experience. It gives them training. It gives them money. It gives them everything when they come out. They can get any kind of fucking loan they want to. They're covered medically. You know, everything is covered for them after they get out of the fucking service. You know, me, I'm stuck. I never went How into the army. How many people have you met with? I never even talked to the motherfuckers the about nothing, man. I'm an anarchist. I never fucking filed income tax. I ain't did shit with these motherfuckers. You know, I don't want to talk to them about it. When they said I had amnesty, all I had to do is go Why down you get married? and salute the flag. You know, I didn't do it. I don't want nothing to do with them, you know? How are you going to get married without identification? Especially? I have identification now. Oh, that's good. I just sent for my birth certificate, but it's the first time I've had ID in 12 years. When I was 15, I picked up this 31-year-old hooker. I you know, she told me if a woman makes too much noise while you're making love with her, she's faking you. And they're either trying to get you to come fast or trying to get you to tip her more. I think it's a little bit of both if it's a whore. Personally, I haven't had, I haven't had a woman like her in a long time. She was really good and bad. At first, you know, I really dug it because, like, what? 14, 15 year old boy gets enough sex. <laughs> you know? But uh, I stayed with her like two, three years. And then I grew tired of her and I wanted to grow a little bit younger. And uh, this is about a year before, you know, Hendrix and Joplin and all them people died. I met, I met JC and John the same time together. I was walking down Haight Street, I was about 17. And me and JC just like, right away we took to each other, you know. We both had, uh, you know, we kind of looked alike, you know. And, uh, you know, we both had long brown hair and wore the same kind of hippie shit, you know, patches everywhere, patches on our patches. It was all during the Vietnam War era, you know. And, uh, you know, we're all radicals or hippies or riot fanatics or something, you know. I mean, I wasn't going to no fucking Vietnam War. So we all had, like, an affinity. We were all against the government, you know. Us, the Indians, Cesar Chavez. <laughs> you know, everybody was kind of, like, together, even though, like, we had different causes. It's the same cause all in all, you know, smash the state. <laughs> 
Anyway, STP John was uh, the leader of the gang. He got shot while taking a piss behind uh, this guy, the Speed Freak's house. And uh, on the one year anniversary of his death, me and JC went out there and we took a couple of chicks and a bunch of booze and got real drunk and fucked the chicks on, on his grave and threw up. <laughs> Did everything, you know, pissed on the gravestone. Yeah, he's dead now, too. He got blown away in a $5,000 heroin deal about five, six years ago. They found him floating in uh, a lake in L.A. And um, I was drunk and wanted to see my old girlfriend. I got there, and she was there with her new boyfriend. He had all his friends there. And so, like, we're there for about five minutes, and the guy said, well, I think it's time you leave now. And I said, well, yeah, well, fuck you. I'll stay as long as I want. This is my ex-girlfriend. You know, I came to visit. And all of a sudden, one dude flew at me. I think it was her boyfriend. And uh, then his friends jumped in, too, and they were, like, jacking me up in the fireplace, you know? And uh, this one guy was hitting me, and it felt real hard. So I grabbed his fist. I said, oh, my God, fucking brass knuckles, you know? So I grabbed him by the hair and pulled his head down, and all of a sudden, his ear popped into my mouth, so I like, <laughs> bit as hard as I could and pulled his head back and spit his ear in his face. And all this blood came out and everything. And so the detectives came and everything with the ambulance. Started asking me, who did this to you? Who did this to you? And I said, get the fuck out of here. I spit on one of their faces. And they took me to the hospital and put me into an emergency operation. And the cocksucker said, well, he's too high. They didn't give me any, uh, no anesthetic, nothing, you know. I did two layers of stitches, like fished all around in my stomach and everything. See if anything was broken. <laughs> Man, you could hear me screaming for three city blocks. No fucking shit. That was like some of the most pain I ever felt in my life. I mean, it had to be as bad as having a baby, at least. It was actually two slices. The guy had sliced me twice, so there was like a little piece of meat in between two both slices. So uh, they had to cut that slice of meat off before sewing me up. And um, so they cut that piece of meat off and they sewed me up finally. Two layers of stitches, mind you, with no anesthetic. Then after the whole thing, I said, well, can I have uh, the piece of meat that was laying there on the uh, little, uh, you know, tray that they put at the side of the bed? Looks like you're going there to eat, you know, drive-in diner. And they said, no. And I said, how come? They said, well, it's not hygienic. And I said, what the fuck are you talking about? That's me. That's, you know, you're going to tell me I can't take me with me? <laughs> so the doctors all stepped out of the room for a minute. And when they did, I hopped up off the operating table, grabbed the hunk of meat and stuck it in my pocket. <laughs> five, two, one, baby, one and five.
man. Okay. Hey, take care, baby. All right, babe. Take it easy. Uh, so, oh, okay. Let's see. Hopefully, me and that. It's the same as the other. Yeah. How much you want for it? 20 bucks, man. Yeah? Listen, I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, hey, man's getting tight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you can wait like 15 minutes for me to get, because I just copied, you know, that I can take the money back. I want it definitely. Hi, uh, is Mom there? Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. How are ya? Good. Everything's been going good with me. Listen, Mom, you know, I, I, it's been a while since I asked you, and I, I'm uh, really put out. I've got to come up with my rent. You know, I got some money coming to me next week, but, you know, I need to have some cash now. Even a hundred to make it, you know? I love you. You're so sweet. You always come through when I need you. The three or four guys, one of them was a drag queen, and uh, I spit on the street. And uh, one of them said, you know, got all indignant and said, oh, you tried to spit on me. I said, I did not, you fucking drag queen. And, uh, you know, words were exchanged, and then, you know, a couple of shoves happened, and uh, all of a sudden they whipped out chains and started kicking the shit out of me, you know? They beat me over my head, just kept beating me and beat me. And uh, the cops came, and, uh, you know, they stopped everything, but, you know, it's, what it is, it's just a scar over the, over the, uh, over the lens, you know. If you can see, it's like a white cloud, you know. Can you see it? Do you see it? It's like it's like a five thousand dollar operation. And what they do, they use like a laser with a small little vacuum. And they go in with the laser and they cut away the the scar tissue. And then they got this little vacuum that sucks it up, you know. knocking on my door early in the morning for asking for a spike and all that dumb shit.
everywhere. People pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. I can't take the smell, can't take the noise. Got no money to move out, I guess I got no choice. Rats in the front room, roaches in the back. Junkies in the alley with the baseball bat. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far. Cause a man with the touch truck repossessed my car. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. My brother's doing fast on my mother's TV. Says she watches too much. It's just not healthy. All my children in the daytime, Dallas at night, can't even see the game or the Sugar Ray fight. The bill collectors, they ring my phone and scare my wife when I'm not home. Got a bum education, double digit inflation. Can't take the train to the job. There's a strike at the station. Neon King Kong standing on my back. Can't stop to turn around. Broke my sacroiliac, a mid range migraine, cancer membrane. Sometimes I think I'm on the scene. I swear I might hijack a plane. Don't push me. Call, I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. I brought you two of these, the ones you saw that you like. And this is the, the style I was telling you about. They have the, like, the little red stone in the back. And it's the same thing, you know, five each. Okay. So take these three from now and I'll bring you the other nine. Okay. Money. My son said, Daddy, I don't want to go to school Cause the teacher's a jerk, he must think I'm a fool And all the kids go reefer, I think it'd be cheaper If I just got a job, learn to be a street sweeper I dance to the beat, shuffle my feet Wear a shirt and tie and run with the creeps Cause it's all about money, ain't a damn thing funny You got to have a car in this land of milk and honey They push that girl in front of the train Choke her to the doctor, so the arm on the game Stab that man right in his heart Gave him a transplant for a brand new start. I can't walk through the park cause it's crazy after dark. Keep my hand on my gun cause they got me on the run. I feel like an outlaw, broke my last glass jaw. Hear them say, you want some more living on a seesaw? Don't push me cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Say what? It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. A child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. God is smiling on you, but he's frowning too, because only God knows what you'll go through. You'll grow in the ghetto, living second rate, and your eyes will sing a song of deep hate. The places you play and where you stay looks like one great big alleyway. You'll admire all the number book takers, thugs, pimps, and pushers, and the big money makers. Job big cars, spend the 20s and 10s, and you want to grow up to be just like them. Huh? Smugglers, scramblers, birds. Burglars, gamblers, pickpocket peddlers, even panhandlers. You say, I'm cool, huh? I'm no fool. But then you wind up dropping out of high school. Now you're unemployed, all non-void. Walking around like your pretty boy Floyd. Turn stick up, kid, but look what you done did. Got sent up for an eight-year bid. Now your manhood is took and you're a make tag. Spend the next two years as an undercover fag being used in the field. Serve like hell to one day you was found hung dead in the cell. It was plain to see that your life was lost. You was cold and your body swung back and forth. But now your eyes sing the sad, sad song of how you live so fast and die so young. So don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. <laughs> Well, I knew Cindy since she was 11 years old. She was uh, in this gang in Berkeley called the Red Rockets. And uh, I was really in love with her. And, you know, uh, she was like very cute when she was really young. And we decided to get married, which was at the time a good idea because I was drunk. And one morning, it was about 5 36 in the morning. 
She woke up and complained of stomach pains. I, I was a little worried, you know, because she was pregnant. All of a sudden, she just aborted. My only son and heir came popping out of, you know, covered in blood. It was gross. It was the grossest thing I ever saw. You know, I, I didn't know what to do, you know? So I just took, it looked like a little rat fetus or something. It was just about this big, you know? She's only about three months pregnant, I guess. And it's really disgusting. I know it's illegal because you're supposed to report those sort of things, but I just took the, the, the fetus and I threw it in a plastic trash bag, <laughs> put it out in the garbage. I mean, I know what to do with it, you know? What are you gonna do with this little thing? You know? Nothing more than a huge period. <laughs> it was weird. Then after that happened, then I sent her back to her mom in Washington State. And a couple weeks later, her mom called me up and said that Cindy had been run over by a logger truck while riding on the back of a motorcycle with this other guy. Then I started shooting heroin, you know, because I had all these nightmares about the baby, about her, about how things could have been different, I guess. But uh, I don't know, maybe it was just never supposed to be. Yes, it was, it wasn't. But uh, I don't know, I always kind of blame myself. I had horrible nightmares for at least a couple of years. Pretty much over the nightmares, but. Sometimes a lot of fun. I mean, if you can imagine a movie in your mind, <laughs> that's what it's like when you're really high. And you could be with somebody that you love that's dead and long gone, but you're so high right now that they're right there next to you. And they're kissing you like they used to, laughing like they used to. And you can see it. It's right there. Because for some reason, opium lets you uh, create whatever you want in your mind. I'm trying. I'm a bit nervous.
like to be sick? Like the worst flu you ever had. Uh, Are you tired? Uh, you got no energy. Uh, you sweat a lot when you're under the covers. When you're not under the covers, then you freeze and you're chilling. Uh, it's forced. Uh, that's why it's better to quit gradually than to just stop all of us. I'll call turkey. Uh, Cut back down to two bags a day, then one bag a day. Then do methadone for a few days and then do... That's it. I'll be off.
go, kid. She's a campfire. She was a campfire. Well, she would go to bed with anyone, as long as they were part of a group. Now, officer, please, we, we, we tried to check out. We should dance here. They were heroin addicts. No, nah, man, they didn't do any drugs. We don't allow junkies in here. Yeah, ever. man. Listen, come here. Listen, uh, I'm, I'm on my way down town. You got a couple of bucks? I don't have any. Come on, man. Policy. I never. Hey, Sid. There he is. That's Sid. Sid. That's Sid. 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 So, Johnny, you were putting a group together with Sid at one point, right? Yeah, and um, in England, about 77, we, uh, we tried it. It didn't work out, really. Uh -huh. How come it didn't work out? Uh, I couldn't put up with his girlfriend. Looks like uh, he couldn't either, huh? I don't know if he couldn't. Somebody couldn't. Uh huh. What was it like playing with him? He was a great guy. Um, you no, know, I've never met anybody like him. I probably never will meet anybody like him again. Uh huh. One unique character. Uh huh. Well, yeah, he had a good attack when he was playing. He had a rock and roll attitude. Really rock. Mm -hmm. What was it like just fooling around with him like after you got done playing and you're just hanging out? You just, you know, never knew what to expect. Yeah. Really crazy guy. Who else was in the group? Well, it was just me and him were trying to write some songs and start something new. It was just me and him actually. Uh -huh. Was there one point where you were doing anything with Jerry Nolan too? Uh, he would have been in the group eventually, yeah. Yeah, about how long was it together for? A week. Is that right up until they went? Or, uh... No, way before that. This was in England. Uh-huh. Great. Okay. You got anything else you want to add? To? No. Well, tell everybody to have a nice day.
Congratulations, Carl. I got a one track mind all the time. Okay, Nicks. St. Mark's Theater is going to be a mini mall. They're building new condos for uh, the NYU students. You can walk down on uh, 8th and D and, you know, not get approached every five steps to buy a bag of heroin. But, I mean, you know, heroin is still easily accessible. You know, it's just it's a lot more sedate. You know, it's more discreet now. I mean, you don't have, like, 20 different guys selling 20 different labels of heroin, but, you know, it's a little bit more undercover, but you know it's still easily accept, you know, accessible. Uh, and in my mind, I wonder if, like, you know, if if uh, all the yuppies and uh, you know students and all the new art galleries down there are going to change the area, you know, because of the influx of money, or if the easy uh, accessibility of drugs is going to change the the yuppies. Well, I don't know what to say anymore. I just gotta keep on living and let life go on. Mm. Let life take its course. Jesus Christ, it's hot. It's one of those white hot nights. Mugginess, it's sticky. It, yeah. Sticky. Very humid. <coughs>
Makes me feel like <coughs> Liz Taylor and suddenly last summer. <laughs> Miss Thing was wearing that white bathing suit flashing the boobs to everyone on the beach. What beach? I don't know. You see, she was doing it for the sake of her homosexual brother. <laughs> see, he used her to get all the boys interested. Mm. And after he had them hooked with the fish, he got his hands on them and played. Instead of giving an apple a teacher, to a teacher a day, you should use ivory soap. <laughs> <laughs> his girlfriend left him for a college student in Michigan. He's been sucking shit. Yeah, 
can't take it, huh, Johnny? Give me your shit. Chuck, we're sitting over there, right there on the doorstep behind that car. Yep. Got it? Okay. And all of a sudden, the police pulled up. So what the hell's going on here? We were just, I was playing guitar, we we're hanging out. And uh, it was funny because Chuck said, you watch, the coroner's office is gonna pull up next. The coroner's office pulled up thought, damn, must be some old John, some old, maybe a politician, you never know, who uh, went up there, got laid and died in the middle of it all, you know, had a heart attack. So we were laughing about it. All of a sudden, the plastic bag came out, and I didn't see him when he got in town. I didn't see him at, at, at all, other than the time he came out in the plastic bag. And, uh, God, man, that guy must have died a horrible death. He was bent like a pretzel, like this. And, uh, it was real sad. I, I, man, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, the manager of the hotel came out and said, hey, did you send that guy to my hotel? And, uh, and, no, what are you talking about? Said, well, I know he, because you're from New York, and because sometimes I'll put people in there. Uh, managers and whatever agents come down. I put them in the hotel and right next to my house. So, uh, I said, yeah, you put that guy in my, in my, in my hotel? I said, oh, what are you talking about? He said, oh, he's some rock star from New York. His name is Johnny Thunders. New York Dolls guitarist Johnny Thunders was found dead on the floor of a guest house in the French Quarter of New Orleans on Tuesday afternoon of causes as yet unspecified at the age of 38. In New York City in the early 70s, the Dolls, fronted by Thunders and singer David Johansson, helped set the stage for punk, but broke up before they could cash in on it. As one friend put it after his death, Johnny never compromised his music for a career move. 
Thunders, whose given name was John Gonzale, went on to front another New York band, The Heartbreakers, and to record solo with the Sex Pistols rhythm section, and even former Humble Pie singer Steve Marriott, who himself died in a fire at his home outside London three days before Thunders. Often as noted for his drug problems, as for such memorable songs as Born Too Loose and You Can't Put Your Arms Around a Memory, Thunders was said to have cleaned up last year, but then relapsed. He had recently recorded in Germany and toured Japan with a new group called JT and the Oddballs before moving on to New Orleans, where he had apparently planned to take some time off and work on new music. He's survived by his mother, his sister, and three children, and the family says a wake will be held in New York this weekend, followed by a funeral on Monday.